Hello everyone, I am Dr. Arindam Pandey. I am a consultant interventional cardiologist practicing in Medical Super Specialty Hospital, Kolkata. Today we will be talking on a very less talked topic which is known as pulmonary arterial hypertension. First of all, we need to know what is exactly pulmonary arterial hypertension. Is, is it the same thing that of hypertension? We must understand if the blood pressure is high, it is called hypertension. It is in the systemic vessels. Now, same blood pressure, if it is high in the vessels of the pulmonary artery or calling pulmonary arterial hypertension. So, high blood pressure in the vessel which actually drains the blood towards the lung. So, pulmonary arterial hypertension is relatively less common condition compared to essential hypertension or systemic hypertension. Now, many times due to rarity of, of this kind, the diagnosis is also not properly done. And the symptom which occurs is also not very specific. So, we must understand what are the common symptoms. Then only we can probably evaluate the patient for a proper diagnosis. Now, common symptom of this condition may start from simple shortness of breath. Initially, it is actually on exertion. That means whenever the patient walks or do some exertion, there is a feeling of shortness of breath. Second common symptom is actually easy fatigability. So, if the patient is getting fatigued in less than ordinary activity, this is a very you know typical of this situation. In extreme of this situation, the shortness of breath may actually happen even at rest or while sleeping or lying down. In, in some situation, patient may also experience some dizziness. Or in extreme presentation, if the pulmonary arterial pressure is very high, patient can actually get a fainting attack or blackout which is known as syncope. So these are the common situation, common symptom. Apart from that, there might be some vague chest pain or in advanced pulmonary arterial hypertension, if there is associated right heart failure, then there can be swelling of the body, particularly dependent portion of the body, pedal part or some lower portion of the body, there can be swelling which may be noticed. So these are the common presentation. Now if these kind of symptoms are seen, the patient needs to be evaluated properly. Now how we should have evaluated initially definitely we need to do an ECG, chest X-ray and echocardiography. Now echocardiography is probably the most important test which can pick up this situation. Normal echocardiography, we need to add something called color Doppler because color Doppler is the test where the PA pressure can be estimated. Now once the diagnosis is confirmed, the pulmonary arterial pressure is high, we must further do some invasive analysis in some of the group of patient which is known as cardiac cat study because we, we might need to see whether the pulmonary arterial pressure which is high that is reversible or irreversible that can have a significant impact on the future treatment of the patient. Now why this happens? Now in our country or across the globe, one of the very important cause of this situation is idiopathic. Idiopathic means we do not know why it is happening actually. So there might be some genetic predisposition. So we try to find out the similar kind of history in the family. Or this condition may be due to you know effect of some drugs. Many of the drugs which are you know given for some other condition can give rise to pulmonary arterial hypertension or proper evaluation of the drug list the patient is on is very very essential. Then comes some condition where the pulmonary arterial patient may be high as an associated finding. Say for example, there is something called connective tissue disorder. Very commonly we do have rheumatoid arthritis, SLE. This kind of condition can give rise to secondary pulmonary arterial hypertension. Some infectious disease, say for example, HIV is another condition where the secondary pulmonary arterial hypertension may be a finding. So these are the common causes, there might be, might be some rare causes as well and an idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension is very important cause where nothing is found, it is a condition which is detected without any predisposing condition or any other factor. Now other situation is very important we must uh, know is the uh, thing called pulmonary embolism. Now acute pulmonary embolism is something else but there might be a situation where small thrombi get dislodged to lung or lung vasculature for a long period of time. In, in, in long run that also can give rise to pulmonary arterial hypertension. So these are the common causes. Now how you are supposed to treat? 
we must properly evaluate the patient. In some of the group of patients, we need to do invasive study, as I mentioned, the CAT study to see the reversibility. Then we have many, many new modality of therapy. I'm not going to detail of that because some group of the drugs are there which causes the vasodilation and dilation of the pulmonary artery. Some look into the basic factor why the PA patient is high. So nowadays, this is a very fast developing area in medical science. And very wonderful new modalities of therapy has emerged. So if you are diagnosed with this condition, please visit your physician. They will guide you because the area has given us plenty of opportunity for proper treatment. With that, I'd like to conclude here. Thank you very much.